Good morning, and welcome to the News 11 Morning Report. I'm Brad Christian. The latest premature birth rate has reached an all-time high nationwide. Between 1992 and 2002, the premature birth rate increased 13%. The president of the March of Dimes says that premature birth is now one of the most common and costly diseases in infants today. Annual hospitalization of these infants reached a peak of $13.6 billion last year. A national Amber Alert has been issued for a four-year-old boy and his mother who were last seen Sunday at about 10.30 p.m. in a black 2000 GMC Jimmy. Police say the boy and his mother may have been abducted at a highway rest stop in Clinton County, Michigan. Kyle Brady is described as being Hispanic, about four feet tall, and weighing 80 pounds. He has brown hair and brown eyes. Nicola Lee Hubert is 28 years old, about five foot five, and weighs about 185 pounds. It is unclear as to who may have abducted them. Anyone with information on their whereabouts is asked to dial 911. United States Democrats in the political race rallied their promises for future plans if chosen for president. John Kerry promises to fight for civil rights and civil liberty. He also promised to stand up against corporations and take jobs me. back from we overseas. Southern Democratic candidate John Edwards proposed to beat George we'll Bush in his own backyard. Edwards claimed that he is already ahead of George Bush in the presidential election, according to a national poll. Democratic candidate Al Sharpton maintains his promise backyard. of taking care of the minorities. Due to an explicit Super Bowl halftime show given by Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake, the FCC ordered an investigation of the incident. MTV hosted the halftime show, which was broadcast by CBS. According to an MTV spokesman, the costume malfunction was a complete surprise to everyone. According to many dress rehearsals, Justin Timberlake was supposed to pull away the bustier and leave the red lace bra showing. After many complaints, Janet Jackson, MTV, and CBS have all issued their own apologies. Coming up, find out about a recent drug bust in Osceola. Stay with us. Someday, I'll be a ballerina, just like them. And this will be my stage, where I twirl and float and swirl for all the people looking at me. Someday, this won't just be my wish. Someday, I won't be sick. Joyce Williams of Valdosta remains hospitalized after she was struck by a bullet over the weekend. Virginia Williams and an unnamed man attended a party at Joyce Williams' residence on Sunday night. Another woman came and allegedly got into a disagreement with Virginia Williams about the unnamed man. Sources say the bullet was attended for Virginia Williams, but Joyce Williams was shot instead. Two America's men survived an accident yesterday afternoon when their truck collided with a train. The truck was hit at approximately 12.30 p.m. near Old Andersonville Road. Ricky Freeman and Johnny Fuller were the two men in the truck. Both passengers were taken to Sumter Regional Hospital, and Mr. Freeman was then transferred to the Medical Center of Central Georgia, where he is now in fair condition. Mr. Fuller was treated and released from Sumter Regional Hospital. The accident is still under investigation. In Osceola, citizens led the Osceola Police Department and investigators to the arrest of 10 men yesterday. A four-month investigation targeting the middle to high-level drug dealers produced the arrest, and more are expected. The South Central Drug Task Force said the case was started due to numerous complaints from Osceola citizens. 
the Georgia Department of Agriculture has lifted a quarantine on a Lake Park pet store. Last week, reports of bird deaths and reports of people with cytokosis symptoms caused investigators to close the store. Several birds and employees have since tested negative for the disease. Cytokosis is a disease dangerous to humans, young and old, with weak immune systems. Valdosta State University's Kappa Sigma Fraternity will honor its annual Philanthropy Week in honor of Hayden Jacquez, a brother who recently passed away from a hard-fought battle of cancer. The contributions will go towards a scholarship fund honoring the fallen brother. This event will take place through Thursday. Last year, the fraternity raised over $1,200 for the Haven. This year, the Brothers of Kappa Sigma are looking forward to exceeding last year's contributions. The VSU Student Government Association announced for the first time in a long time, everything is on schedule. Treasurer Keith Fleming, who proposed the budget for the spring semester, says the SGA has extra money left over from the fall semester and can sponsor more events. Also during the meeting, members of the Senate announced the progress of the Miss VSU pageant, which will be held during March. Your community announcements are coming up, but first, here's a quick look at your weather. Mornings are the toughest. Sometimes you gotta cover three states in four days. Not easy. That's over there. You're gonna get that from him. We are in the studio with Valerie from Groove Lily. Tell me, how long have you guys been out on the road promoting this album? We're pretty much always on the road. It kind of never stops. Um, we are relentless road warriors. Out and back, out and back. Come on, guys, let's do it. Gene, how's it going over there? I'm basically the leader of our band. I'm, in many ways, the driving force behind our career. The fact that I've decided to you know, go for my music career and succeed or die trying is, uh, I think, a function of, of the confidence that I got from being in the military. The qualities you take with you from time spent in the military are qualities that stay with you forever. Today's military. The South Georgia Coalition to End Homelessness will have its monthly meeting today at noon in the conference room at the Lea Ellis Building located on 601 North Lee Street. You may bring a sack lunch. The Have a Heart Bake Off auction will be held tonight at 6.30 at the Lowndes County Civic Center. You may bring cakes, candy, pies, cookies, bread, and heart-healthy desserts. Each entry must be in by 6.30 in order to win. Proceeds will go to the American Heart Association of Lowndes County. For more information, call 333-5185. The VSU Small Business Development Center will have a seminar on how to start your own business next week. This seminar will be on Thursday, February 12th at 1 p.m. in Thaxton Hall on North, North Campus. Call the VSU Small Business Development Center for more information. The Chamber of Commerce will have an important announcement tonight at the Chamber of Commerce building. Come to the reception from 4.30 to 6.30 for cocktails and hors d'oeuvres. Well, that's it for this morning's edition of News 11 Morning Report. I'm Brad Christian. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Welcome to News 11 Morning Report. I'm Roxanne Peppers. Senator John Kerry once again achieved victory for the second time in two weeks. Senator Kerry has won on the road. However, Senator John Edwards is still very much in the race for the presidency after having won the South Carolina primary. Senator Joe Lieberman withdrew from the race after a poor showing yesterday. The campaigns now will travel to Michigan, Washington, Maine, Tennessee and Virginia all will have primaries within a week. The American Heart Association announces that February 6th will be National Wear Red Day for women to help raise awareness for heart disease. Women are asked to wear any type of red clothing. Heart disease and stroke are the number one and three causes of death for women over the age of 25. 
killing more than half a million women a year. Officials in Washington have confirmed that the test conducted in the Dirksen Senate office building is the deadly toxin known as ricin. The substance was found early Monday morning and was identified yesterday. The deadly poison comes from the castor bean. 16 employees had to undergo a decontamination process. No one seems to be affected by ricin. The military has become involved with this investigation. Now in local news, free oral cancer screening will be offered at the Pearlman Cancer Center at South Georgia Medical Center. Healthcare providers and dentists will perform the exam. Oral cancer can be painless and have few symptoms. With the help of a doctor or a dentist, the cancer can be found in the earliest stages. The screening will be offered February 19th from 6 to 8 p.m. Stay tuned. When we return, we'll tell you about Valdosta State University's new Internet Cafe. Nevins Hall is receiving a much-needed makeover. Lester Bradley explains. At Nevins Hall, Coal Pepper Construction Company is here at, on VSU campus re-renovating Nevins Hall. I caught up with the Ron Moore, project manager, and Wayne Neesmith, project superintendent, to see how plans have been going. Well, on uh, September 1st, we started the renovation of the, the south part of Nevins Hall. And um, construction's proceeding well. Um, we're we're pushing hard to, to bring it in ahead of schedule. All our work's uh, inside the building, and and what you do see, you do see some broken windows, but you have to understand that the whole building was gutted. It was all removed. The old desks, labs, uh, all the probably 80 percent of the uh, existing walls are out. We have new masonry in. There's going to be new doors. The windows that are broke happen during construction, they'll be replaced. So what you're going to see at the end of it is a new building, is essentially a new building. The weather has really not affected us that much. Uh, most all of our work is inside the building. Well, uh, at the end of the completion, then we'll turn it over to the college, and then the college will utilize it as, as it used to be. But it'll just be a better, better building, more improved building. Broken glass, pipes, dirt. It's Nevins Hall right now, but in a few short months, it was something very beautiful. For Newsletter Morning Report, I'm Les Bradley. Show the ones you love you care about their health by giving them smoke-free Valentines. Lowndes County is helping residents support the, love, the ones that you love by asking them to quit smoking. Each Valentine has a positive message and information beneath the Georgia Tobacco Quit Line. The Valentines are anonymous and are sent free of charge. Valdosta State University will be the new home of an internet cafe. Odom Library will house the latest addition to the campus. The computer lab of the cafe will open mid-February. However, the food service will begin accommodating students in March. Until then, vending machines will provide snacks for students. For now, students are more than welcome to make use of the new facilities that have been provided for them. Motorists traveling on inner perimeter road should expect delays to railroad repairs. The repairs will cause a detour at Inner Perimeter Road and North Folk Southern Railroad crossing west of Copeland Road. Drivers should follow the reduced speed zones and drive with caution when nearing the work sites. For more information on road delays, call the Lowndes County Engineering Department at 671-2424. When we return, we'll have a story about inmates in Georgia. But first, here's a look at your local weather.
26-year-old Waycross High School teacher, James Kurt Sr., is charged with sodomy, statutory rape, child molestation, enticing a student for indecent purposes, and sexual assault of a person in custody. Kurtz has been accused of sexually molesting a female student. The teacher is being held without bail at Waycross City Jail. After college, Georgia college student Colm Owings was killed in December of 2002 in a tractor trailer accident, his family has begun lobbying to slow the trucks down. Over 200 people die every year in tractor trailer incidents. As tractor trailers traveling at 60 miles per hour is equivalent to the destructive force of a normal car traveling at 300 miles per hour. A proposal before the legislator may eliminate all state paid chaplains. This is discouraging news for Pastor Terry Clyte. Clyte works as a chaplain at the Frank Scott State Prison in Milledgeville. Clyte deals with inmates who have been charged with the crimes for, from driving drunk to murder. The reality of inmates returning to the real world is difficult for prisoners to deal with. The legislator will consider the proposal during this current work session. Thanks for joining us this morning here on News 11. Have a wonderful day. Good morning and welcome to the News 11 Morning Report. I'm Ashley Paramore. Topping our news at this hour, there's a suspect in Florida missing girl case. Police in Sarasota say 37-year-old Joseph Smith is in custody on unrelated charges. Authorities think Smith could be connected to that abduction of 11-year-old Carly Brucia. The girl's abduction was caught on a local business's security tape Sunday. Florida issued an Amber Alert for Brucia on Monday. Her whereabouts are still unknown. Apparently, censoring the world evolution is still shaking up the public. Today, the National Science Teachers Association says that it still has qualms about the draft of the new Georgia Science Performance Standards. Mostly, the association is upset about the de-emphasis de placed on the censorship of the world evolution, claiming that omission will also exclude various other concepts needed to understand the theory. The National Science Teachers Association will hold its national convention in Atlanta in April. The Georgia's House Transportation Committee has approved a bill that will fine drivers $15 who are caught smoking in vehicles carrying toddlers for and under. If passed, this will be the nation's first law to restrict smoking in private vehicles. Supporters of the bill say children need legal protection from secondhand smoke. The future of the proposal is now in the hands of House Rules Committee, where it will decide if a full floor vote is needed. High school senior Laura Williams has been asked to quit her job study as a hostess at Hooters in Guyton, Georgia. The school system superintendent, Michael Moore, feels the job is appropriate for a work-study position due to the sexual connotations involved. The student's father has no problem with the job. The hostess's uniform includes a high-neck t-shirt and khaki pants. Williams does not serve alcohol to customers. First Lady Laura Bush and a group of women who have survived heart disease visited Savannah yesterday where they delivered an important message. Women need to live healthier lives. Bush visited St. Joseph's Hospital and noted that more women than men have died of cardiovascular diseases over the last 20 years. The common consensus from the women was that they are too busy working and taking care of their families to pay attention to their own health. In response, Bush says if she can get her husband to eat broccoli, we can all eat an extra serving of vegetables a day. U.S. Senator Zell Miller introduced legislation for members of Congress that would eliminate excessive wasteful spending and provide a significant incentive to balance the federal budget. The Fiscal Responsibility Act of 2004 would reduce the pay for members of Congress following any fiscal year in which there is a federal deficit. The bill would reduce the salary of senators and congressmen by 5 percent and void their automatic cost of living. Adjustments should the federal government fail to balance the budget. Coming up next, the story of a child being caught with pot on playground. Stick around, News 11 continues next.
28-year-old Monique Dencol Anthony of Augusta was charged with possession of marijuana and contributing to the delinquency of a minor when a daycare worker discovered a bag of marijuana on Anthony's four-year-old son. Anthony says that after a Super Bowl party, she placed it in her dresser where she believed it would be out of reach to her son. Anthony was released on Tuesday on a $7,000 bond. The uproar over Jackson and Timberlake's halftime duet on Sunday continues. Timberlake reports that Jackson and her choreographer contacted him wanting to perform a unrehearsed costume reveal and that he was under the impression that a red bustier would remain. He went on to say that he was shocked and appalled. Jackson's publicist reported that she will probably be pulled from the Grammy schedule this Sunday, which will be broadcast on a tape delay system as a result of Sunday's Super Bowl mishap. The Blazers baseball team opened the 2004 season with a come-from-behind win over the St. Leo Lions. John McDonald hit the go-ahead home run, and Grafton Kent saved the game by striking out the last hitter. Greg Adams and Matt Rucker led the 10-hit attack for the Blazers' win with two hits each. The Blazers opened their home schedule with a doubleheader against Barry on Saturday. The first game is set to begin at 1 o'clock. Stay with us when News 11 continues. We'll take a look at what's going on in your community. Waiting in line. Oh, to wait in another line. To get a government form is really old hat. But you don't have to wait in line. Because now the government is officially online. FirstGov.gov brings the federal government to your computer. In an instant, you can print out the same social security form you're waiting in line for. You can also get a passport application, buy surplus government property, you name it. With FirstGov.gov, it's easy and secure to get tax forms or even apply for student aid. It's the official web portal of the federal government. Pinky, we're out of here. Come on, Pinky, I'll buy you a steak. FirstGov.gov, the waiting is over. Looking for a place to take your Valentine's date? The Valdosta Symphony Orchestra will host a special concert on February 14th by playing a mix of symphonic and jazz selections. Concert begins at 8 p.m. The cost is $17.50 per person. For more information, contact Linda Mullins at 333-2150. Hurry to the art exhibit. Tomorrow is the last day to attend the annual Valdosta Art National Juried ex Exhibition. Artists from over 35 states are showcasing a variety of art, including ceramics, scratchboard, digital books, photography, and more. For more information, contact the VSU Fine Arts Gallery at 333-5833. To find out what is going on in your community, attend a city council meeting. A meeting will be held today at 530 on the second floor of City Hall. For more information, call 259-3500. South Georgia Medical Center will host a class for a couples who are preparing for the birth of a child. The cost is free to those giving birth at SGMC and $40 to those giving birth elsewhere. To receive more information, contact Community Health Promotion at 259-4141. Valdosta State University UNICEF, an affiliate of the United Nations Children's Fund USA, will host a general meeting today at 6 p.m. in the UC Dogwood Room. Attend the meeting to learn how to become a community activist to make a difference in the lives of children. You can find more information on www.valdosta.edu slash UNICEF. Thank you for watching the News 11 Morning Report. I'm Ashley Paramore. Have a wonderful day. Good morning and welcome to News 11's Morning Report. I'm Reagan McCoy. President Bush defended his decision to go to war with Iraq in an interview on NBC's Meet the Press on Sunday. Bush also admitted that weapons of mass destruction probably won't be found.
He also expressed his confidence in being re-elected into office in the upcoming presidential election by stating, quote, I want to lead this world to more peace and freedom. President Bush signed an order Friday to start the investigation of U.S. intelligence regarding the war in Iraq and also pre-war intelligence. The investigation is set to carry on until March of 2005. Senator John Kerry came out on top this weekend in Maine's Democratic caucus. Kerry won the caucus with a 19-point lead over Vermont Governor Howard Dean. This is Kerry's third straight win in weekend in caucuses in his 10th overall. Kerry still proves to be the front runner for the Democratic Party nomination for the presidency. He is projected to win Tuesday's primaries in Tennessee and Virginia. The fate of William Charles Lewis will begin will begin to be determined today in Fulton County. The man who went on a killing spree in East Point, Atlanta in 2001 will find out if he is sentenced to the death penalty. Lewis, who killed two people and critically injured others, pleaded guilty to the crimes last week. The decision is in the hands of Superior Court Judge Alice D. Bonner after Lewis decided not to allow the jury to have any say. This is Bonner's first death penalty case. Robert Dwight Foster has been charged with the murder of five-year-old Takeria Juden. Her 10-year-old half-brother, Ronald Porter, was also badly beaten by Foster early Saturday morning in Jonesboro. The mother of two children, Octavia Juden, was out visiting a male friend at the time of the murder. 39-year-old Foster became angry when he saw Octavia Juden's male friend's truck in her driveway. Foster is now being held in the Clayton County Jail. When we return, we'll tell you how you can become involved in a smoke-free campus. Stay with us. Unwanted traffic is occurring frequently on Old Clydeville Road due to special events at Wild Adventures. A study conducted by the URS Corporation was requested by the Georgia Department of Transportation. Adding an extra lane on the way to Wild Adventures has been discussed, as well as problems with safety concerns for pedestrians crossing the busy road. With a number of Georgia smoking laws changing, shortly many organizations on college campuses are starting to get involved. News 11's Naya McGinnis has more. Thursday, in front of Palm Quad, the Georgia Tobacco Use Prevention Section encouraged students to sign smoke-free campus pledges. We are here with the state's tobacco use prevention section, and Student Health Services at Valdosta State University is helping us to, um, we're educating students about the dangers of smoking and the dangers of secondhand smoke. Students who signed were entered to win a dozen roses and gift certificate to Outback Steakhouse. This program aims to create a better understanding and awareness of tobacco's effect on Georgia. They will return to VSU for the Hot Not Smoking Tour to continue to support smoke-free campuses. I just signed a pledge to, um, I guess, be tobacco-free. And we have a Georgia Tobacco Quit Line, which is 1-877-270-STOP, and that's a free resource for all Georgia residents 18 and older. We're encouraging everyone to call anyone to stop any to tobacco use. There's trained counselors who will answer the phone, and they will set up a step-by-step -step quit program for you and um, send you a free quit kit and help you quit tobacco. Support the smoke-free fight. With News 11 Morning Report, I'm Naya McGinnis. <laughs> If you want to learn more about the Hot Knot Smoking Tour, call 1-800-270-STOP. 
new clarifications have been made for the smoking ordinance in Valdosta. The day to end smoking in public buildings has been extended to March 1st. The changes in the law include no smoking on patio areas and no smoking signs must be posted all throughout the buildings. Adult entertainment businesses were once an exception to the law, but the new changes now include these businesses as well. An open forum was presented to the public of Valdosta Saturday by the American Civil Liberties Union of Georgia. Executive Director of the ACLU, Debbie Seagraves, spoke on important issues including racial profiling, civil rights, and enforcing cultural diversity in our local government. This meeting was part of the Freedom Train Across Georgia Tour. Valdosta State University's ROTC program hosted a blood drive recently on campus, raising their goal of 42 units of blood for the American Red Cross. With a national shortage, blood donations are needed now more than ever. Giving blood takes only 30 minutes, and anyone 17 and older, weighing at at least 110 pounds, can give. Valdosta's American Red Cross is located at 2517 Bemis Road and is open Thursday, Saturday until 2 p.m. For more information, call 241-1640 and find out how you can get involved. The annual Penny Drive, run by SL Mason Elementary, is still going on. The month-long event is sponsored by the teacher pa parent-teacher organization. The goal for the fundraiser is to exceed last year's total of $1,600. The money raised will be used to buy picnic tables for their school, outdoor learning area. The public is welcome to contribute to the cause and can drop off pennies at SL Mason Elementary School. We've got all the winners from last night's Grammys when we return, but first, here's a look at your local weather. Book prices may drop at Georgia Public College bookstores due to legislation under House Bill 1368. Under this bill, new college textbooks at any bookstore that is assimilated with the University System of Georgia will be sold at 15% of the wholesale price. This bill has come at a time when the textbook allowance of the Hope Scholarship is in danger of being taken away. Sticking with the Hope Scholarship, there will be a new grading system set up for teachers with Georgia Public Schools. School Superintendent Kathy Cox has said teachers do not have a system to go by when it comes to issuing out grades to students. This grading scale for teachers will be set to regulate the amount of students who qualify for the HOPE scholarships. Many students are qualifying for HOPE, but money is running out for them due to the amount of lottery revenue. Beyonce Knowles was last night's big Grammy winner, walking away with five trophies. She won Best R&B Album and four other pre-show awards. Beyonce also opened the show with a duet performance with Prince and later a solo performance of her hit Dangerously in Love. Other Grammy winners include Outkast with Album of the Year, Ever Essence with Best New Artist, and Coldplay with Record of the Year. That's all we have for this edition of News 11. Have a fantastic day. Good morning, and welcome to News 11 Morning Report. I'm Gayla Goodwin. 
The Democratic race is still in full stride with Senator John Kerry in the front. Kerry has high hopes that he will win the primaries today in Tennessee and Virginia. Even though Kerry is in the lead, Senator John Edwards and retired General Wesley Clark aren't giving up. Although polls in Tennessee and Virginia have shown Kerry ahead in most of the races, both Clark and Edwards have been trying to change the outcome. The next large contest will be held March 2nd, when 11 states will be voting. Although Senator John Kerry swept the three states over the past weekend, a lot of the voters in Detroit are disappointed at the results of the Michigan caucus. Nearly 90% of the city's population is black, and community leaders say problems occurred when their regular caucus sites were closed at last minute, and many voters were redirected to new sites. Democratic Party Chair Butch Hollowell promised the black voters and leaders that investigation will take place. From black and gold to royal blue and burnt orange, this wildcat will, begin a jag will become a jaguar beginning June 1st. With just a year and a half left, Dr. Thomas Kraft, principal of Valosta High School, will take a job as principal of Cedar Shoals High School in Athens. Kraft was one of the finalists for the position, according to the Athens Banald Hare. When the Clark County Board enthusiastically voted in favor of Kraft, Family interest led to Kraft's decision to accept the position at Cedar Shoals High School. Lowndes High School started its first day of spring practice yesterday. The Georgia High School Association and rules regulation allow only 10 days of team practices organized by coaches in the spring. Coach Randy McPherson states that he keeps a close count on the days he gets for spring practices. He hopes to make use of the remaining nine days of practice. Over 100 Varsity Vikings covered the field inside Martin Stadium Monday in full pads, while 70 Lowndes ninth graders began work in the practice field next door. Last night in sports action, the Valdosta State University basketball teams traveled up to Tennessee to take on conference foe Lincoln Memorial University. With just over 10 minutes left, the first half, the Lady Bla Blazers were down 11 to 12. They proceeded to go on a 14 to 2 scoring run to end the half. In the second half, the Blazers started off strong but could not hold on their lead. Under three minutes remaining in the Lincoln game, Lincoln Memorial tied the game at 46. Courtney Parker went to the free throw line with 10 seconds remaining in regulation play and hit a free throw to tie the game at 51 and forcing overtime. The final score was VSU 58, Lincoln Memorial 62. The team's record is now 15 and 6 overall and 4 and 5 in the Gulf South Conference. Last night, the sixth-ranked men basketball team regained their composure after a loss on Saturday at West Georgia. Also taking on Lincoln Memorial, the Blazers had a slow start trailing until the fifth-minute mark of the first half. At the second half, the score was tied at 16. Coming out, a, coming out strong after the halftime, the Blazers dominated the second half. The final score was VSU 46, Lincoln Memorial 40. The Blazers now improved their record to 19 and 2 overall and 8 and 1 in the conference. Both the Lady Blazer and Blazer basketball teams return home Saturday night to play Alabama Huntsville. Women's tip-off is scheduled for 5:30 with the men's game to follow. Coming up, find out how children's voices are being heard everywhere. Stay with us. Introducing the all-new Enclave. It's a minivan to the max, with features like remote control sliding rear doors, 150 cable channels, a full sky view roof, temperature controlled cup holders, and the six point navigation system. It's the minivan for families on the go.
seeing you. Georgia's House Transportation Committee has approved a bill that will fine drivers $15 if they are caught smoking in vehicles carrying toddlers four and under. If passed, this bill will be nation's first law to restrict smoking in private vehicles. Supporters of the bill say children need legal protection from secondhand smoke. The future is a proposal is now in the hands of the Agenda Setting Rules Committee, where they will decide if the full four vote will happen. A special education teacher is recovering today after 16-year-old student let off three shotgun blasts in Columbia High School in East, East, East Greenbush, New York. The student, John W. Romero, was arrested at the school after pleading not guilty to a charge of attempted murder. He was sent to jail. School superintendent Terrence Brewer said Romero fired three rounds from a 12-gauge shotgun. One round hit teacher Michael Bennett in the leg. Bennett was treated at the Albany Medical Center and was released after two hours. Lowndes County, a Lowndes County woman is dead after suffering from major burns last summer. Veronica Norwood was doused with gasoline and set on fire in May and was admitted to Shans Burn Unit in Gainesville, Florida. She returned home and was admitted into Smith Northview Hospital, where she was later pronounced dead. The Lowndes County Sheriff stated that the body sent to the crime lab for autopsy results. 21-year-old William Sean Dedge remains in critical condition this morning after he was hit by a truck on U.S. Highway 84 yesterday. Dedge was working with United Rental Highway Tech Incorporated painting fog lines in the westbound lane. The 2004 International truck was driven by a 43-year-old jury Christopher Carr. Carr was not injured. Over one million people died last night in the United States of heart attacks and strokes. The Icelandic company has identified a link to one gene. The identified gene may double a person's risk for heart attack and stroke. Clinical trials will begin in a month on a drug that will essentially deactivate the gene, helping as much as 10% of the population. However, some cardiologists and researchers say the study does not have broad applications. Community leaders are fighting to save Moody Air Force Base. Leaders from around the South Georgia met yesterday with Congressman Jack Kingston about Congress's upcoming military base closures list. Kingston told the crowd that they still need to be persistent with their message that Moody Air Force Base is growing and should not be shut down. The base is better conditioned compared to when the base closure list came out in the early 90s. Moody has grown from one command base to a four command base meaning that Moody's role in the Air Force is more vital than 10 years ago. Coming up, your community announcements. But first, here's a quick look at your local weather. I wanted to help. I just didn't know where to begin. I wanted to do something. But what did I have to offer? I can only help at certain times. Volunteer? Nah. Not me. I wanted to include my family. I found it on the internet. It's cool. Now we can volunteer together. I do have something to give. Tonight at 6, there will be... Tonight at 6, there will be an American Cancer Society Relay for Life team recruitment and captain's meeting at the Perlman Cancer Center. If you are interested in joining this year's relay or are a captain, please come to tonight's meeting. This concludes our VSU 11 broadcast. I'm Gayla Goodwin. Have a fantastic day. Good morning and welcome to News 11's Morning Report. I'm Roxanne Peppers. Senator John Kerry captured two more victories in Southern primaries on Tuesday. Retired General Wesley Clark has decided to withdraw from the Democratic race today in the hometown of Little Rock, Arkansas. 
Since the primaries have begun, Kerry has won 12 of the 14 elections. There is a new face on the SGA board. Lester Bradley reports. I'm here on BSU campus to talk to the new vice president, William Finney. I caught up with William to see what are his goals and plans for the upcoming semester. Uh, my main goals are to make sure that SGA is uh, properly organized. As the vice president, one of my core jobs is to work with the Senate. And working with uh, Nick Beard, the Senate president, I've come up with a, a new proposal that I'll be introducing to him uh, coming up soon. And my main concerns is about the organization, the Senate organization of SGA, to make sure that we're doing our job properly representing the students of BSU. Are there any remarks you would like to have for the students at BSU? One of the things I want to make sure the students know is that I'm here working for them. Uh, my office has a nice comfortable couch, so if you have any complaints or problems or anything you want to address, just come on in and sit down. There's a new face here at SGA with a new attitude. His name, William Finney. For News 11 Morning Report, I'm Lester Bradley. South Georgia Medical Center has recently received a modern heart catheter imaging system. It allows doctors to get a virtual look at the health of any patient's heart. The system also provides information about a specific patient that can be digitally stored on the computers. South Georgia patients will no longer have to go out of town to receive this kind of imaging. The news network will not be a lower, but will provide the best medical treatment for heart patients. When we return, we'll tell you all about VSU's baseball team. Stay with us. County Commissioner Richard C. Lee has planned to run for a third term. The Republican candidate plans on continuing renovation on the jail and the judicial complex. He also plans to rebuild the bridge of Staten Road that has been out of use for the past decade. There is one special person that Bowood School has on their hearts this Valentine's Day. Gabriella Leo has more. It was a big day for kindergartner Victoria Newsom as her school, Valwood, pulled together a successful fundraiser on Sunday. With the help of a teacher, a restaurant, and a supportive community, Victoria Newsom may soon be able to raise money for her cancer fund. I taught Victoria in pre-K a couple years ago, and uh, she's just a very special, neat young lady. And um, as well as the climbing wall we had out there and all the proceeds went to help offset Victoria's um, medical expenses. An important factor in the success of the fundraiser has been in the support of Valwood's faculty and students. The Valwood families, it's such a supportive group. Uh, Victoria's a special little girl. She's one of many special children that we have at Valwood. And her ill health has just been uh, just such a detriment to us. We're just so saddened by what she's having to go through in her family. In speaking with the headmaster, the importance of each child is truly recognized. This is a very close-knit, uh, caring and loving community. Um, it's not just a place to work or a place to go to school, uh, but a place that really cares about not only the kids who are here, but each other and the families that are here. Uh, this event has uh, proven that to me. So as you can see, Valwood is not only a private school, but a caring, supportive, and loving family. For the VSU News 11, I'm Gabriella Leo. First State Bank is open for donations if you are interested in giving to the Victoria Newsom Fund. A new four-way stop sign at Wood Valley Drive and Pine Cliffs Drive will be installed tomorrow. 
The City of Valdosta's engineering department will also install warning signs along with stop bars in addition to the stop signs. Motorists are urged to use caution. The new four-way stop will go into effect after the installation is finished on Thursday. The Valdosta Board of Education has increased their $5.8 million budget for the Cleveland Field project. Since June 2003, the budget has increased by $400,000. The new artificial turf system was awarded to Sprint Turf on a 7 to 1 vote by the board members. The project will cost a total of $542,000. VSU's baseball team started their new season this past week with a disappointing doubleheader. The team hopes to redeem themselves with this week's game at Barry. The Blazers' next home game is Saturday. Taxpayers in Georgia will be identified on the internet as the State Department of Revenue tries to retrieve back taxes. An estimated 200 people who owe between $95,000 and $1 million, along with 200 companies with past due bills, will be the first to be exposed. The goal is to recover $100 million of the $1 billion in back taxes. To view the list or for further information on the Department of Revenue, visit their website at www.ga.tax.org. At Brown Hall, renovations continue. The renovations began August of 2003 and plans for completion will be sometime be before the fall semester. New additions for students to expect include larger laundry rooms, new furniture for the common area, and many more amenities. Brown Hall will be welcome to additions for VSU's ever-growing campus. When we return, we'll tell you about 11 newspapers converging together. But first, here's a look at your local weather. Eleven of South Georgia and North Florida newspapers will be brought together online. Area newspapers from Americus, Cordell, Moultrie, Tifton, Douglas, Thomasville, Valdosta, and Live Oak will be included on the online news site. The site will include news and information, classified advertising, online merchants, and other links. Viewers can look at the local news, sports, and obituaries from South Georgia and North Florida. 18-year-old Julius Peterson of Moultrie was acquitted yesterday of 20 felony charges stemming from an August armed robbery in Norman Park, where offenders entered a house posing as a cop and tried to serve fake warrants. Co-defendant Sean Burks was not that lucky. He was sentenced to seven years in prison and 13 years probation for the crime. His plea was bargaining down to an armed robbery charge. That's all we have for this edition of News 11. Have a fantastic day. Good morning and welcome to News 11 Morning Report. I'm Larry Sproul. Gay marriages is a topic of debate for many lawmakers. News 11 Eric Lee has more. What do we want? Equal rights. When do we want it? Now. Anger and protest as Massachusetts lawmakers consider amending their state's constitution to ban gay marriage. 
This is the White House steps up its tone on the polarizing issue. When you have activist judges seeking to redefine that institution, uh, the issue of marriage, uh, then the only alternative may be the constitutional process. George W. Bush is stopping just short of endorsing a constitutional amendment restricting marriage to heterosexuals, but he's leaving the door wide open, his spokesman saying a proposal banning gay marriage but allowing states to pass civil union and domestic partnership laws is consistent with the president's views. Marriage is a sacred institution between a man and a woman. Uh, he believes very strongly that we should protect and defend the sanctity of marriage. It's also an area where the president must tread lightly, rallying the base while taking pains not to offend the center, lauding traditional marriage without sounding anti-gay. Our nation must defend the sanctity of marriage. His Democratic foes face the opposite problem. I support equal rights and the right of people to have civil union, equal partnership rights. I don't support marriage. I never have. The federal government doesn't get to say who gets married and who doesn't. What the federal government's job is to do is make sure everybody has equal rights under the law. None of the Democratic candidates support a marriage amendment to the Constitution. And truth be told, if it does come to pass, it won't be for very long. For News 11 Morning Reports, I'm Eric Lee. So far, more than 5 million voices have been heard on Capitol Hill. On September 25, 2003, Lifetime Television delivered petition signatures urging Congress to, dry, to ban drive through mastectomies. The legislation will require insurance companies to cover a two-day minimum stay for mastectomy patients. The legislation ensures that a doctor and a patient will finally make a decision together about staying at the hospital after a mastectomy. Today, Lifetime still continues its fight on Capitol Hill. The next time you want to pull a prank, think about it. Howard Smith, an ex-city administrator for Smyrna, serves community service for a prank he pulled on a coworker. Smith placed an envelope with white powder on J. Joseph's desk, a city human resource commit employee. Smith was indicted. Instead of going to trial, Superior Court Judge Ken Nix approved Smith last month for acceptance into a pretrial diversion program. The program requires Smith to perform 200 to 400 hours of community service. Coming up next, we'll tell you about the status of Blazer basketball. Stay with us. Because you believed in me. I can believe in me. I can believe in me. Because you pushed me to because be better. Because you pushed me to be better. I learned to push myself. Push myself. myself. Because you showed me respect. Respect. I respect others. I respect myself. Because you showed me a place. I can use everything you everything taught me. Everything you taught me. I found my place. I have found my place. This is my place. For all the young men and women in the United States Air Force, there was one person who showed them the possibilities and opened the door. To the teachers, counselors, ministers, and moms and dads who helped a young man or young woman discover that the greatest force of all is inside of themselves. We thank you. And more importantly, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. They thank you. Many Valdosta residents had had questions regarding identity theft and tax returns. A financial seminar was recently held to answer some of these questions. Here's News 11's T. Lee with more. A seminar at the South Georgia Regional Library was held to educate Valdosta residents on how to become more aware of their finances. Iris Brown says that Valdosta has had a problem with identity theft. You know, they're stealing your, your name, your social security number, you know, your date of birth. Uh, basically, a lot of times they have everything. Tax season is currently underway, and Wade McCray says that there is money to be claimed. The Internal Revenue Service has over $2.5 billion in refunds that have not been claimed. Either people did not apply for them, uh, they did not apply for the return, or uh, they applied and did not follow up uh, on what they should have received as a return. Brown also said that steps can be taken to become financially successful. To be fit, you need to know what your score is. You need to know how many inquiries you made. You need to make sure those inquiries that you done. And also, you need to make sure that all your bills on that report has shown that you're not past due, that you're on time. 
To be financially fit, check up on your financial reports at least once a year. For News 11 Morning Report, I'm T. Lee. The men's basketball team continues to hold the number one spot in the South region. This is despite suffering their second loss of the season last weekend to West Georgia. The Blazers, who are 19-2 overall, dropped to 10th overall in the nation. They return home after a three-game road trip to take on Alabama Huntsville this Saturday at the Complex. Life expectancy reached an all-time high at 77.4 years. Simultaneously, infant mortality rate has risen in the U.S. according to the Center of Disease Control and Prevention. The infant mortality rate is seven deaths per 1,000 live births. The rise is partially due to American women putting off motherhood until their late 30s and 40s, where their babies are more likely to have birth defects or other potential deadly complications. Older women are more likely to use fertility drugs to get pregnant and can lead to twin, triplet, and multiple births. Often these births result in premature labor and low birth weight, which can endanger the infant's lives. Wadasta honored Lowndes County military veterans by erecting a monument yesterday morning. The monument is located on the east side of Wadasta Lowndes County Conference Center. The monument is to recognize and honor all World War II, Korea, and Vietnam veterans. Many veterans were present and looked on with pride. Coming up next, we'll tell you about your community announcements. But first, here's a quick look, look at your local weather. in protecting your financial future and choose to save. <clears throat> you can't mess with a big dog. The first presentation of the Student Faculty Colloquia series begins tonight at 7.30 in the University Center Theater. Jimbo Hitchcock will begin the presentation with his topic, Philosophy of Time. Come to learn more about BSU students' research. South Georgia Medical Center is holding a support group tonight at 7 p.m. to those who are afflicted with Crohn's or colitis. Meetings will be held at Dining Room 2. For more information, contact the Community Health Promotion at 259-4141, extension 1. South Georgia Medical Center is also hosting a support group at 7 for grieving parents, grandparents, and siblings. The topic of discussion is positive resolution to grief. Meeting will be held at the basement classroom C. For more information, contact the chaplain's office at 259-4510. You can learn how to start your own business by attending a seminar hosted by VSU Small Business Development Center. Tonight from 1 to 1.30 at VSU North Campus, Thaxton Hall, room 102. The cost is $30 per person. Call 245-3738 for more information. The Vadasta Newscomers Club will be welcoming Mom and Tots at Chick-fil-A located at 1100 St. Augustine Road across from the mall at 3 p.m. today. Contact Michelle at 242-5035 for more details. Well, that would do it for this edition of News 11 Morning Report. I'm Larry Sproul. Have a wonderful day. Good morning and welcome to the News 11 Morning Report. I'm Kevin Allison. President Bush continued his re-election campaign yesterday by opening NASCAR's most important event, the Daytona 500. Bush gave the cue to start the engines while more than 180,000 fans roared from the stands. 
This gave Bush a chance to interact with many supporters of his campaign and visit the state that made the deciding vote in the presidential election in 2000. Dale Earnhardt Jr. won the race, taking the cup for the first time in only three years after his father died trying. The Democratic debate was held yesterday at Marquette University in Wisconsin. Candidates seemed to target President Bush in most topics, such as the war in Iraq and tax cuts. Frontrunner Senator John Kerry also took a lot of heat from other candidates, trying to score points with the voters. The debate took place in preparation for Tuesday's primary, in which Senator Kerry is once again expected to win. The Georgia State Senate will meet today to vote on Resolution 595. Resolution 595 is legislation that would ban same-sex marriages in the state constitution. In order for the constitutional amendment to pass, it would need to, need to win two-thirds of the Senate vote in the Senate before it would go before the House. The House then votes on the amendment, and if it passes again with the same two-thirds vote, it will be left up to the state voters in the general election on November 2nd. Resolution 595 defines marriages as a union between a man and a woman. More than 1,600 gay couples have been married since Thursday in San Francisco. 150 couples are set to be married today, which may be the last day for gay couples to be married. California voters in 2000 approved a ballot that, would, that says the state would only recognize marriage between a man and a woman. Lawmakers in Massachusetts have also decided to recess until March 11th after not being able to come up with a decision on a constitutional amendment banning gay marriages. Governor Sonny Perdue's state Governor Sonny Perdue's staff made an error in bookkeeping that may aid Georgia's schools in the long run. $179 million was not accounted for in Purdue's mid-year 2004 and fiscal 2005 year budget. Democrats want to put this new money to use by putting more money in the public schools throughout the state. The education system in Georgia suffered substantial money cuts in the last year and it stands to lose $255 million in funding under Purdue's spending plans for the 2005 fiscal year. When we return here on News 11, we'll tell you about the, how the community may benefit from the addition of retail stores of the retail store Lowe's. Stay with us. Waiting in line oh, to wait in another line to get a government form is really old hat. But you don't have to wait in line. Because now the government is officially online. FirstGov.gov brings the federal government to your computer. In an instant, you can print out the same social security form you're waiting in line for. You can also get a passport application, buy surplus government property, you name it. With FirstGov.gov, it's easy and secure to get tax forms or even apply for student aid. It's the official web portal of the federal government. Pinky, we're out of here. Come on, Pinky, I'll buy you a steak. FirstGov.gov, the waiting is over. The old Hay Hira school building burst into flames late Saturday night. Hay Hira Mayor Myron Crow suspects arson to be the reason for the fire. The building, which has been closed since 2001, was in discussion to be used as new space for the Hay Hira Police and Fire Department. Investigations are already underway to determine the exact cause of the fire. VSU is trying to do something about the growing population of people with AIDS. The Office of Alcohol and Other Drug Ed Education will have an AIDS Awareness Week starting today. VSU has AIDS tests offered the first week of every month. Contact the infirmary to make an appointment. And for more information about the disease, call the Alcohol and Other Drug Department at 259-5111. The Valdosta City Council has decided to push back the date for the indoor smoking ordinance to March 1st. The ordinance was supposed to go into effect today, but some minor clarifications needed to be made, specifically concerning about adult, enterta adult entertainment businesses. The provision in the ordinance also requires smoking, smokers to be 25 feet from the entrance of the building. The county plans to mail 3,500 businesses, no smoking signs to place in their establishments. Competition with Home Depot is coming soon. The new Lowe's will be located where the old Kmart Shopping Center used to be on 1106 St. Augustine Road. Construction is in progress. The 58-year-old company is in the second largest home improvement retailer employing more than 130,000 people. Habitat for Humanity, American Red Cross, and other scholarship programs plan to benefit from the addition of Lowe's to the community. 
the Vedalista Lounge Recreation Parks and Community Affairs Senior Citizens Division will host a seminar at the Senior Citizens Center on Tuesday. There will be guest speakers from a private in-home care provider located in Tifton called Hearts and Hands Incorporated. Citizens over 50 years of age may attend the seminar free of cost. We've got information on changing bar hours in Georgia after the break, but, here, but first, here's a look at your local weather. I'll be a ballerina, just like them. And this will be my stage, where I twirl and float and swirl for all the people looking at me. Someday, this won't just be my wish. Someday, I won't be sick. Future voting in Georgia will be done on a touchscreen computer as of March 2nd for the Georgia primary. The state secretary of state, Kathy Cox, thinks that touchscreen voting is a good idea. Democratic Representative John Lewis doesn't like the idea of using touchscreens because he believes they are vulnerable to electronic attacks. He has proposed the idea that there should be a paper version that says who a person is voting for if a, screen, if a touchscreen is used. Hours are changing for Atlanta area bars. The hours for serving alcohol in underground Atlanta bars will end at 4 a.m. instead of 2.30 a.m. The city council thought they had already exempted underground Atlanta bars from, from the 2.30 serving time. The last council meeting made a mistake by putting the underground bars back on the list with the other bars to stop serving alcohol at the earlier time due to the amendments. Council members believe that the 4 a.m. serving time will improve the entertainment complex in underground Atlanta. Thanks for joining us for this edition of News 11's Morning Report. Uh, have a great day. Good morning and welcome to News 11's Morning Report. I'm T. Lee. The Disney company is rejecting an offer to be bought by a massive cable company. Comcast's offer of $48 billion has been denied by Disney for being too low. Disney says it will consider any legitimate proposal that create a shareholder value. Comcast replied that the offer was compelling and sound. Disney's investor bid more shares for the company so that a higher offer can be negotiated. A constitutional ban on gay marriage is one step closer to approval in Georgia. The state Senate approved the legislation restricting legal marriage to heterosexual couples only in a 40 to 14 vote on Monday. The amendment now moves to the House for debate. Tom Reagan has details. It just goes too far. And I say to you that it's time for us to have the backbone to say enough. The senator sponsoring the gay marriage ban said it was time to take a stand for traditional marriage and traditional family values. The Democrats attacking the measure called it election year politics and a means of legislating discrimination against gays. This agenda is like a thief in the night. It will consume you. But you know, I'm not going to let it consume me because I'm going to stand up here and I'm going to fight for the people in this state. I know that we ought be careful about what we say and do on these issues because they can have an impact beyond what we sometimes expect. Before the vote, gay rights activists were declaring why they were opposed to the measure. I don't know if it will go to the public for a vote or not, um, but I think that the public should think hard and long about whether or not we need to write discrimination into the Constitution. The law goes far beyond defining marriage, and it specifically says that it wouldn't allow any type of relationship recognition for gay and lesbian couples. 
That was Tom Reagan reporting for WSB in Atlanta. Mayor John Freddie, County Manager Joe Pritchard, and members of the Valdosta Lowndes County Industrial Authority have officially welcomed Valdosta's newest industry. Bearding Trucking Incorporated is an eight-year-old company based in Cairo, and it's expanding and opening a new maintenance base in the Perimeter East Industrial Park. 63 jobs with an annual payroll of $2.4 billion will be added to the area's economy. Owner Robert Bearding states the reason for the expansion is based on Valdosta's cost road with Interstate 75 and Interstate 10. He also said the steady growth of the city is another factor for the expansion. A Lowndes County Department of Family and Children's Services caseworker was shot at yesterday while sitting in her car. Authorities state that the back windshield of her 2004 Nissan Maxima was shot at around 11.30 a.m. with a BB gun while she was parked at Hudson Dockett Housing Project. The woman apparently was getting ready to go into a client's house when she heard a loud pop. When she exited her vehicle, the impact hole was visible, but she did not see anybody. After the door was closed, the windshield collapsed. Is there a link to antibiotics and breast cancer? Find out after the break. Stay tuned. Mornings are the toughest. Sometimes you gotta cover three states in four days. Not easy. We are in the studio with Valerie from Groove Lily. Tell me, how long have you guys been out on the road promoting this album? We're pretty much always on the road. It kind of never stops. Um, we are relentless road warriors. Out and back, out and back. Come on, guys, let's do it. Gene, how's it going over there? I'm basically the leader of our band. I'm, in many ways, the driving force behind our career. The fact that I've decided to you know, go for my music career and succeed or die trying is, uh, I think, a function of, of the confidence that I got from being in the military. The qualities you take with you from time spent in the military are qualities that stay with you forever. Today's military. A study in Chicago believes that the intake of antibiotics could enhance your chance of developing breast cancer. Over 17 years, women who took an antibiotic prescription for at least 500 days had double the risk of developing breast cancer in comparison to those women who did not use the drugs. Dr. Roberta Nest and Jane Colley said that the study is still premature because it could have been the disease that the antibiotic was used to treat that enhanced breast cancer rather than the antibiotic itself. A stabbing incident occurred in Live Oak, Florida yesterday with when an argument between friends sent one friend to the hospital. One man allegedly stabbed the other in the chest with a knife, then threatened the wife of the stabbed man with a knife as well. Lafayette EMS took the victim of the to the hospital where he was, where he was then life flighted to Shands Hospital in Jacksonville. The victim is in stable condition and the defendant is under arrest in the Lafayette County Detention Center. The fire that ripped through a VSU resident hall is being ruled as a possible arson. Sunday evening, a small fire was started on the second floor south in Lowndes Resident Hall. According to the VSU chief police, a liquid accelerant caused damage to the door and the rug underneath it. Although the door did not burn, the resident living in the room called in the fire and no one was hurt. Last night's in sports action, the Valdosta State Lady Blazer basketball team pulled off an outstanding 62-54 win over the Lions of the University of North Alabama, trailing by as much as 13 during the first half. Tiffany Van sank a huge 27-foot buzzer shot to give the Blazer an edge to close the first half with a score of VSU 24, North Alabama 31. After halftime, Candace Farrell and Tracy Newton helped the Blazer outscore North Alabama by 15. The, lazy, the Lady Blazers shot 58% from the floor while holding the Lions to 27% during the second half. The Lady Blazers record improves to 17 and 6 overall and 6 and 5 in the East Division of the Gulf South Conference. Following the big women, the big women last night, the men's basketball team worked their magic yet again. For the second <coughs> game in a row, the Blazers trailed off at halftime but came out with a bang in the second half to defeat the University of North Alabama 77-64. to Freshman Will Thompson came off bench in both halves and made a difference with his deadly three-point shooting. Thompson went 5-4-5 five five behind the arc, with three of them coming in row midway through the second half to give the Blazers the lead for the rest of the game. 
both men and women's travel team teams traveled to West Alabama and Montevallo this weekend to close out their road schedules. The final game for the teams will be Saturday, February 28th. The 54th Annual Ham and Egg Show will be held today and tomorrow at 9 a.m. at the Lowndes County Civic Center. The show began, at ha began a half century ago when John Sanders, a Lowndes County Extension agent, wanted to encourage farmers to improve the quality of the livestock and meat that was being produced. The show was expected to have about 55 hams and about 40 to 50 dozen eggs. Stay tuned for your community announcement, but first, here's a quick look at your we local weather. Nobody wears ties to school. Tie says you're serious. It'll make a good impression. And remember, you're there to study, to, study, to, to learn, learn, and to make something of myself. I got it. Almost half of all UNCF students are the first in their family to go to college. They have some great architecture classes. Dad, I'm not really interested in architecture. Well, keep your options open. And remember, no girls until you until my work is done. done. And I'd yes. make sure that I got my Dad, lunch. Dad going. I am. I know. Listen, you better get going. Don't yeah. want to be late the first day. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And when you're the first to go, you're going for a lot of people. The United Negro College Fund. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. The Science and Math Seminar Series continues this Thursday with a presentation by Dr. Beatty and Case from Florida State University's Department of Mathematics. The seminar will take place at the first floor auditorium of the Biology Chemistry Building at 4.30 p.m. VSU President Ronald Zachari will hold an open day for the faculty and staff tomorrow. The open day is scheduled from 2 to 4 p.m. in President Zachari's office, located on the first floor of West Hall. Faculty and staff are invited to visit with the president during these times. That's it for this edition of News 11's Morning Report. I'm T. Lee. Have a great day. Good morning and welcome to News 11's Morning Report. I'm Roxanne Peppers. John Kerry won the Wisconsin Democratic presidential primary Tuesday night. Kerry ran ahead by six percentage points and had 40% of the votes. John Edwards came in second, adding new life to his campaign. Howard Dean's third place finish will mark the end of his campaign for presidency. Over 350 people were injured and 200 killed after a train explosion in Iran this morning. The train was transporting fuel and chemicals. Five villages were destroyed from the blast, which was heard over 50 miles away. The blast registered on the Richter scale as a minor earthquake. As cold weather attacks South Georgia again, Lester Bradley spoke with students on campus about its chilling effects. I'm here at BSU's campus to see how the weather has been affecting the students. I caught up with a few students to get their reactions to the weather. Right now it's cold, man, so... Most of the ladies, and um, they stand inside, everybody stand inside. I think the weather has a lot to do with your mood. Uh, in Valdosta, uh, jumps up and down, man. As you can see, students don't appreciate the cold weather and would rather they be warm. But to stay healthy, Farber Medical Center is always open to students with valid VSU IDs. For News 11 Morning Report, I'm Lester Bradley. It doesn't look as if VSU students will be switching out their scarves for Speedos just yet. Three juveniles were arrested and taken into custody last night for deliberately setting fire to former Hayhira Middle School. Georgia Insurance Commissioner John Oxidine confirmed that the school was set on fire due to arson. The age of the juveniles ranged from 13 to 15. After numerous tips from the public and after an intense investigation, their arrests were made. When we return, we'll tell you about VSU students' artwork. Stay with us. Okay, people, listen up. Our fugitive has been on the run for 90 minutes. 
Average foot speed over uneven terrain, barring any injuries, of four miles per hour. That's a six mile radius. I want checkpoints established at I-95, 495, and over at Route 66. What I need from each and every one of you is a full target search of every gas station, residence, warehouse, farmhouse, hen house, outhouse, and dog house in that area. Your fugitive has just cashed in his 401k plan, and all he had to do was roll it over. Go get him! Learn about rollovers and protecting your financial future, and choose to save. You can't mess with a big dog. Beard and Truckin' of Cairo will be increasing their company and moving into Valdosta. The new company will be great for the city of Valdosta, creating over 60 new jobs and will bring almost $2.5 million in revenue. Valdosta is the perfect place for the new company, given that Interstate 75 and I-10 are so close. The local fuel economy will also rise due to the fact that they will spend over $1 million per year on fuel. Wild Adventures, the City of Valdosta, and Keep Lounge Valdosta Beautiful are teaming up to collect and recycle 20-ounce soft drink bottles. The Georgia Recycling Coalition awarded Valdosta $1,000 to start the educational program to increase in awareness of recycling. 75 Big Bend trash cans have been purchased to help with the recycling. Some of the containers will be placed throughout the theme park. An investigation into two local armed robberies continues. The first robbery occurred at 9.37 p.m. at Expressen on Bemis Road. The second robbery occurred at 11.05 p.m. at Bowes BP on St. Augustine Road. A clerk told officials that a black man and a black woman entered the convenience store, pointed a handgun at the clerk, and demanded money. The pair ran to the back of the store and have yet to be found. Starting this week, VSU students' artwork will be on display in the VSU Art Gallery. Out of 200 VSU students who entered the annual competition, over 50 works of art were selected. The exhibit, which features several types of mixed media, was judged by Georgia State University and VSU's key art professor, Andy Cunningham. VSU Art Gallery Director Julie Boland stated that the art show reflects the type of art that VSU students enjoy. The fourth annual Azalea Festival Century Bike Ride will be sponsored by the Community Affairs Department on March 13th. The ride will start at the South Lounge Recreation Complex in Lake Park at 8 p.m. The cost to participate is $25. If you would like to participate, your money is due by March 1st. There is a new smoking ordinance in Valdosta. I took a closer look at this legislation. The indoor smoking ordinance will be pushed back to March 1st. As far as enforcement, enforcement will be based upon a complaint basis. The city does not at this time anticipate having people out actively looking for violations of the ordinance. That's not the intent of it. The city council and attorneys are making sure that all legal aspects are covered and the public is fully aware of this law. Fines ranging from $75 to $200 can be issued to individuals and businesses breaking the law. Right now we're already in effect because we hired a lawyer and we had to pay for that and the city councilmen they don't have to pay for their lawyers because we already pay our taxes which pay their lawyers for them so maybe they'll i know they're not going to reimburse us and we're going to lose in the long run anyways but you know we'll have to do what we have to do and recover from it although the city council sees no real threat economically on the city other residents are concerned well 85 percent of our business is from the bar business and when you have alcohol usually you have smoking and if they deteriorate that, what, you know, who's going to pay our bills? Who's going to help us? Because we're going to have to shut down. Regardless, this ban will stand, and only time can tell the impact it will have on local businesses. For News 11 Morning Report, I'm Roxanne Peppers. With the ongoing debate concerning the smoking ban, the City Council will meet tonight to open the issue to the public and decide what form the ban will take. Olympic Park will host the 18th annual Arbor Day celebration this Friday. The festivities will begin at 10 o'clock. The Georgia Forestry Commission will present the city of Valdosta with a Tree, a tree City USA Community Award. When we return, Georgia makes changes to maps. But first, here's a look at your local...
proposed changes were made after a court overturned Georgia's redistricting maps. Republican made a plan that would make some Senate Democrats move into districts with each other, giving more room for Republicans to defend. A three-judge panel has given the legislator until March 1st to design their own maps. If new maps fail to be made, the court will draw maps for them. Government sharpshooters from the U.S. Department of Agriculture and Wildlife Services units have been brought into Red Top Mountain State Park in Cartersville, Georgia to thin out the deer population. Park officials say that there are an estimated 80 deers per square mile in the 2.5 square mile park. A healthy forest may have 20 deers per square mile. Tobacco growers and health groups united today to propose new tobacco regula regulations by the Food and Drug Administration. The unity between these two groups is the result of farmers who fear lawmakers won't help their causes. If tobacco companies continue to work and support the public health community, both groups will be successful. Thank you for tuning in to VSU News 11. Have a great day. Good morning and welcome to the News 11 Morning Report. I'm Melanie Lane. When you go out tonight, will you be smoking? The Valdosta City Council will meet tonight at 5.30 to discuss clarifications to the Clean Indoor Air Ordinance. The council has decided that the 25-foot rule and the Adult Entertainment Business Ordinances need to be clarified. The council will make a decision on whether to omit the ordinance from all local Valdosta bars. Other discussions will include deciding what a reasonable distance from an entrance would be as well as the revision on outdoor areas section. In the race for presidency, John Kerry says he never expected an overwhelming victory in Wisconsin. His campaign was hoping for a conclusion that would have weakened Howard Dean as well as John Edwards. But surprisingly, Edwards has been on the rise. Kerry and Edwards have few policy differences except for when it comes to the issue of trade. In the end, it will boil down to their backgrounds and experiences that will win the votes. Edwards says his southern background Stand makes him the candidate, candidate who can beat President Bush, and Kerry says his national life. security experience makes him more ready for the presidency. Jo Georgia voters will have their chance to vote for Kerry or Edwards on Super Tuesday in two weeks. Construction is ongoing at Baysmore Hyder Stadium, although the date to finish the field may be moved back. Here's News 11's Jameson Hayes with more information. The Baysmore Hyder Stadium renovation project's completion date has been extended, but not due to recent weather delays. General Superintendent Rick Orr tells us about a new state-of-the-art AstroTurf surface the stadium will include. The original due date on the job was August 6th. Then with this change order to go to AstroTurf, they've given us about 20 more days. So now the completion date's get at August 26th. The project is scheduled to be completed in time for the upcoming football season. Valdosta State University head football coach Chris Hatcher says his team is excited about playing in the new facility. Well, we're awfully excited about all the, the progress that is um, being made at the stadium. It's going to be one of the finest facilities in the southeast. Of course, there's not much to show right now because of um, all the stands are torn down, the field ripped up. While in shambles now, the new and improved Baysmore Hyder Stadium at Cleveland Field will be something the citizens of Valdosta can be proud of. For News 11 Morning Report, I am Jameson Hayes. When News 11 continues, we have the story of VSU President Dr. Ronald Zachary's meetings with students and faculty this week. Stay with us.
We are the seal of freedom. We are the United States Coast Guard. Heed your country's call. Join the Coast Guard or Coast Guard Reserve. The shield of freedom. During one week each month, VSU President Dr. Ronald Zachary sets aside special days for faculty, staff, and students to come into his office and talk with him individually. Zachary wrapped up his week this week of meetings yesterday. On Monday, he met with students, including the reigning VSU homecoming queen, Ms. Gayla Goodwin. Zachary tells News 11 that he enjoys visitors and there's a three-step approach he takes in his meetings. A university president is a busy person, so when the president door is open, you should drop by and say hi. Watch VSU TV for specific dates and times of Dr. Zachary's next open office days. University of Colorado football coach Gary Barnett was placed on a paid administrative leave after making incentive remarks about a former female kicker. Katie Heninda, a former kicker for the football team, has, an, has accused an unidentified player of rape. Barnett has stated that Hinda was an awful and terrible kicker. The investigation is ongoing. VSU is celebrating Black History Month with seminars, presentations, song, and dance. News 11's Gayla Goodwin brings us some of the highlights of the culture being displayed on campus. Extraordinary things are happening today at Valdosta State University as black students came together and celebrated Black History Month in what SGA named the Black History March. During the program, students of Black Student League performed an African dance. I feel like the march served the purpose of letting the students know that we are celebrating black history. We do have lecture series and we have different programs, but some of them are occurring after classes are out. This was done at noontime so students who were walking to and from classes could participate and see that we are actively trying to celebrate Black History Month. Black History Month is just not the month of February. Black History Month is 365 and also Women's Month, which is the Mar month of March, is also 365. As other students, Letitia Scott and Rakesha Harris sang. Lord, it's so hard living Life, a constant struggle each and every day. Some wonder why I'd rather die than to continue living this way. The Black History March was opened by LaShonda Teamer and closed by the harmonic sounds of students as they sang, We Shall Overcome, as they marched the Valdosta State University campus. For News 11, I'm Gayla Goodwin. After scoring 10 runs in the fourth inning, the VSU baseball team came back from a 9-0 deficit to beat Thomas University yesterday at Thomasville. In the first innings, the Nighthawks scored five runs off starter Parks Robbins, Robinson and four more off of pitchers Brandon Miller and Brian Bennett. VSU then scored 10 runs in the fourth inning thanks to six hits, three walks and two Nighthawk errors. After the Nighthawks tied the game in the fifth inning, VSU took the lead with a run in the sixth and added four more in the seventh. The final score was 16 to 13. VSU's record now stands at four and three with an upcoming home game against Tampa on Saturday at two. Your community announcements are coming up, but first, here's a quick look at your weather. the stars Oh, one down for you I'd shine it on your heart So you could see the truth And I can change the world I would be the sunlight in your universe You would think my love If I could, I'd change the world If I could, I'd change the world 
Want to expand your culture? Well, there's plenty to do tonight at VSU. In the Biochem Building, check out the program African American Art Ordering the Universe. VSU art majors display their work and Margot Candelario lectures. Show starts at 7. Also on campus tonight, the play Tartuffe is at the Sawyer Theater at 7.30. The show runs through February 25th. Tartuffe is a comic treat that centers around how a con artist enters an uns unsuspecting naive family and manipulates them. The play demonstrates that being a fool isn't restricted to any specific time or place. The Valdosta community holds its 18th annual Arbor Day celebration Friday morning at 10 at Olympic Park, 402 South Patterson Street. The Georgia Forestry Commission is set to designate Valdosta a National Arbor Day Foundation Tree City, USA community for the 18th consecutive year. Call 259-3507 for more information. Get ready for the fourth annual Azalea Festival Century Bike Ride on March 13th. The ride starts at South Lowndes Park and Lake Park. The event is still a few weeks away, but if you're registered by March 1st, registration is only $25 after that. It will cost you $30. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the News 11 Morning Report. I'm Melanie Lane. Have a great day. Good morning and welcome to the News 11 Morning Report. I'm Gabriella Leo. Today, citizens of Lowndes County will be able to cast their ballots in the primary elections. A modification to the Georgia election law last year made the advance voting possible. It allows people who will not be able to vote on March 2nd, the actual primary's election date, a chance to cast their ballots. The voting will be held until February 28th. With February winding down, that also means that Black History Month is also coming to an end. Valdosta State still has a number of opportunities to help educate here on campus. Evidence that are le events that are left to take a place include an African American cultural exhibit, a play entitled The Brothers, and a number of workshops and lectures open to the entire community. For more information concerning how you can take part in these events, contact the Office of Equal Opportunity Programs and Multicultural Affairs at 333-5463. Third-party candidate Ralph Nader has announced his intention to run for the presidency once again. Nader has stated that he is running largely because he feels that the Republican and Democratic parties do not offer enough opposing views. Four years ago, while running for the Green Party, Nader received 3% of the popular vote. This year, Nader has chosen to run as an independent and not use the Green political party to back him. A 10-year-old boy from Ray City is still recovering after being shot by one of his friends on Sunday. Brody Brown was rushed to South Georgia Medical Center and received surgery to amputate his right leg from below the knee. The two boys were playing with a shotgun and accidentally fired the gun as they were reloading. No one is being blamed for the accident. Brown will remain in the South Georgia Medical Center until he is released to the Shriners Hospital in Tampa today. When we return, we will have more information on Senator John Kerry's visit to Georgia. Stay with us. Songbirds we enjoy each summer, winter in the rainforests. Orioles, terns, tanagers, and countless others fly to our yards each spring. An amazing gift of nature. Right now, many are losing their homes with the destruction of the rainforests. Migrating flocks have been cut in half. The time to act is now. From the cloud forests of El Triunfo to the lush Amazon, the Arbor Day Foundation's rainforest rescue is making a difference. You can help protect the rainforests. Go to arborday.org. See how to support rainforest rescue and find out which trees to plant where you live so our songbirds have a home in the summer and the winter too. Over half our planet's rainforests have been destroyed. Go to arborday.org now. John Kerry's visit to Georgia concluded this weekend, giving him more confidence that he could win the southern states. 
Kerry's major opponent for the Democratic nomination, John Edwards, has stated that he would win the Southern states, being from South Carolina. Kerry's trip to the Atlanta area included stops in Buckhead and also Ebenezer Baptist Church, where Martin Luther King Jr. used to preach. Kerry has been earning the support of the African American community in the state, which will be important come the Georgia primary on March 2nd. New goals have been set for the Lowndes County Board of Commissioners. The new goals will go into effect on July 1st and should be completed one year later. Areas which are looked to be improved upon include roads, bridges, recreation, and fire prevention. The county's goals will be ongoing throughout the year as areas need to be worked on. The new internet cafe that opened this semester is not meeting student expectations due to a $40,000 overshoot in the budget. The highly anticipated 24-hour cafe must close at 12 midnight during the week and 7 p.m. on the weekend. Coffee and food are not yet being served. The financial demands caused by the overshoot is putting a strain on the VSU budget. Understaffed police forces in Atlanta are often overwhelmed by 911 calls that they cannot effectively patrol their areas. Atlanta Mayor Shirley Franklin plans to hire 500 more officers and raise police salaries 40%. The cost for this will be $25 million and is expected to go into effect by 2007. A program at VSU is giving patients dealing with Alzheimer's and dementia a place to go during the day. The Alzheimer's Daycare is a facility that provides patients with different activities consisting of arts and crafts and socializing. The daycare is located right by First Christian Church on Patterson Street and is open from 8.30 to 4. Volunteers and patients are welcome to contact the director, Jennifer Boone, at 293-6145. The Kappa Delta sorority raised money for child abuse by conducting its annual Shamrock Project. News 11, Tari and Batten has more. Kappa Delta sorority hosted its 21st annual Shamrock Project this past Saturday. 23 flag football teams participated in this event. Many South Georgia businesses donated money to help aid this project. Well, 20% of the proceeds will um, be donated to Prevent Child Abuse America, and 80% will stay um, within the community and donated to uh, local organizations. And the, um, the organizations that we have um, donated to are DFACS, uh, the Children's Advocacy Center, um, the Methodist Youth Home, and um, an organization called Kids Chance. If you or any other local company are willing to donate any money to prevent child abuse in America, just contact the Kappa Delta sorority at Veterans State University. From News 11, I'm Tarian Batting reporting. When we return, we'll tell you who the lucky winner for the $230 million jackpot is. But first, here's a quick look at your weather. Walter, there's something calling me out there. I have to go find it. Every weekend, millions of middle-aged adults head out the door to take on a new sport. Or pick up where they left off in a sport they haven't played in years. This is a good thing, but there could be a downside. New physical activities bring new stresses to bones, muscles, and joints. A good reason to take new sports one step at a time with plenty of stretching and warming up. And remember, weekend warriors are flirting with danger. Your body does a better job avoiding injuries with a sensible fitness program you follow every day. Fitness is good, but exercise common sense. A public service message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons who remind you to get up, get out, and get moving. I'm back. A conclusion may finally be reached for the Oklahoma City bombing case. A date has been set to begin the death penalty trial for suspect Terry Nichols. Nichols was sentenced to life in prison in 1997 for the bombing, which took place nearly 10 years ago, killing 168 people in the federal building. Residents in the community have disagreed on whether or not the money should be spent to have another trial for the bombing. The date on the trial has been set for March 1st. On Saturday, Valdosta Fire Chief J.D. Rice won first place in the Valdosta Fire Department Chili Cook-Off. 
a group of judges decided that he had the hottest bowl of chili in town. A lucky person from Stephen City, Virginia, is the sole winner of Friday's Mega Million Lottery drawing, winning a total of $230 million. The next drawing is worth an estimated $12 million. That's all the time we have for today. For News 11 Morning Report, I'm Gabriella Leo. Have a great day. Good morning and welcome to the News 11 Morning Report. I'm Eric Lee. Rain falls yet again this morning as the Tuesday workday begins. After a high of 75 degrees with little rain yesterday, today is a different story. Expect rain for the next 36 hours. The forecast calls for an inch of rain today and possibly another inch through tonight and tomorrow. Stay tuned for an update of your weather forecast. As severe weather hits stress South Georgia, so does the annual Family Protection Day. This is the time of year when Georgians are encouraged to prepare for all types of harsh weather in case of an emergency. The Georgia Emergency Management Agency wants families to go over their disaster plans so if bad weather hits, families will know what to do. The agency suggests that families make a 72-hour emergency kit, designate meeting places, phone numbers, and safety rules during this week of severe weather awareness. A statewide severe weather drill is scheduled tomorrow in Georgia schools and businesses. Early Monday morning, two employees were held at gunpoint at the Huddle House on North St. Augustine Road. The suspect made away with an undisclosed amount of money and the keys to a 1999 Red Pontiac Grand Am. Also during the robbery, the suspect shot out the window of another man's truck. While the robbery was in progress, another man entered the restaurant wearing a stocking mask and carrying a shotgun. As the original robber fled the scene, as he fled, the second robber chased after him and restaurant patrons later heard a shotgun fire. Police are investigating. The VSU football players rolled up their sleeves for a major blood drive Monday. Instead of practicing football, these teammates were practicing giving the gift of life. Head coach Chris Hatcher said the goal of his team is to raise 150 pints of blood. Every player and football coach eligible to be a donor is required to give blood. The players were also asked to bring a friend that is willing to donate. The Blazers' blood drive was such a success that the American Red Cross had to bring in extra helpers to take blood. The team was able to donate over 200 pints. Students of Ora Lee West Elementary School are grinning ear to ear after receiving 40 new computers from a program sponsored by VSU's Student and Free Enterprise and First Federal Savings and Loan of Valdosta. SIFE sponsors an after school program for students of Ora Lee West, which held twice a week. It's held twice a week at the community center. During the after school program, students are allowed to work on computer stations where they are taught basic computer skills. Coming up after the break, find out why some of the Valdosta community is getting upset. Stay with us. And welcome back to Mega Data. And Stacy, your next question, please. Bachelor number one, as my financial advisor, how would you advise me to structure my investment portfolio? Bearing in mind my cautious nature, I would say invest in government bonds, money markets, and CD accounts. Uh, bachelor number two. Baby, you got to be in the game if you want to make some money. I'd say it's your age to invest fully in high yield stocks, and that's no bull. And bachelor number three. Well, actually, diversifying your investments is always a good idea. It will make your overall portfolio more balanced, and it can minimize your risks. Ah! Okay, there you go. Now it's time for you to make a date. Who's it going to be? Bachelor number one? Bachelor number two or bachelor number three? It's got to be bachelor number three. Bachelor number three. Remember to make a date today to diversify your portfolio and choose to save. Jennifer Tanner of Americas was prosecuted yesterday for two counts of felony murder. She was the former babysitter of eight-month-old baby Haley Bone, who died last year, late last year, in an Atlanta hospital. The babysitter was indicted for child cruelty and aggravated battery with intentional bodily harm to child causing severe brain damages. Valdosta State University disrupts an historic neighborhood to find out more about the past. News 11's T. Lee has more. 
Valdosta State University's archaeology class has local residents wondering what is happening in their backyard. I don't know what he was doing back there. I really don't. Dr. Marvin T. Smith explains the confusion. Robert's house is supposed to be the first house in Valdosta, Georgia. And we'd like to try to reconstruct the lifestyles of Valdosta's first residents. We're looking all over the yard. The yard covers about half a city block. And we're investigating old businesses, barns. We're looking for trash deposits. Anything that'll tell us something about how the people lived here before. The class surveys the yard, dig for artifacts, then clean and catalog the items found. We found old animal bones and a 1905 Indian head penny. And it's really cool because we get to find out where we came from, what Valdostans lived like before today. Find a little history in your backyard. For News 11's Morning Report, I'm T. Lee. American and German officials say American investigators received the first name and telephone number of one of the September 11th hijackers two and a half years before the attacks on New York and Washington, but the U.S. failed to pursue the lead aggressively. This is considered significant because it may have been a missed opportunity for American officials to penetrate the Al-Qaeda terrorist cell in Germany that was at the heart of the plot. And it came roughly 16 months before the hijacker showed up at flight schools in the United States. The FBI released a copy of the letter containing the deadly poison ricin Monday. The letter was intercepted before reaching the White House last fall, which warned that Washington would be turned into a ghost town unless new trucking regulations were scrapped. The FBI released photos of the White House letter and envelope and posted them on its website. When we come back, we'll have a quick look at your community announcements, but first, here's a quick look at your local weather. The City of Thomasville and Thomasville YMCA will host the 27th Annual Rose City 10K Run on April 24th for ages 13 years and older. The registration fee is $12 until April 3rd. Late registration will be $15. For more information, call 229-226-9878. The Valdosta Heritage Meeting will be held in the Magnolia Room of the Valdosta Country Club on Thursday from 12 to 1 p.m. Lunch will be $8.50. Members and prospective members may come. Call for reservations at 242-8204. Cook County Operation Care will sponsor a free tutoring program for grades one through nine. Tutoring will be held at the Old Middle School on Martin Luther King Jr. Drive from four to 6 p.m. today and tomorrow. For more information, call 229-896-1818. Well, that's it for this edition of the News 11 Morning Report. I'm Eric Lee. We thank you for tuning in. Join us again tomorrow for another edition. Have a great day.